If you've worked long enough in Revit, you've probably realized that the tags inside of Revit don't always behave as predictable. So what we're going to do here is look at how we can modify the tags so that they behave the way they're intended to behave as we were used to in uh, other applications, maybe like AutoCAD or AutoCAD Architecture or AutoCAD MEP. So I'm looking at Revit 2013 here and I'm using it as an MEP kind of design tool at this point. And I want to zoom in on a particular area. I'm going to zoom in on this closet here in the plan. And you'll notice that I have a tag here, a space tag in particular, that is kind of leading over here to this space element. And what I want to point out here is that if we look at the shoulder of the leader, you'll notice that there's this you know, minute little detachment here, or this offset. And as a CAD manager or a BIM manager, that little thing might drive me insane and keep me up at night. So one we're, we're going to do here is look at how we can fix this. Uh, another issue is, is as I change types, this little gap here becomes exaggerated. So if I switch to the area option, you'll see now it kicks down to here. So this is not how I want this tag to behave. And you've probably seen this numerous times in your own tags as you use the product. So how do we go about fixing this? Well, we've got to start at the family itself. So let's go ahead and edit the family. So if I open up the family here, you'll notice I've turned on the reference planes and some of the dimension elements. Um, I got some constraints here. I got an equality constraint, which is actually equalizing the length of this line to its endpoints. Uh, I've tweaked the out-of-the-box family here a little bit, but um, in all in all, it's all the same uh, kind of information that we have in the out-of-the-box family, just off-centered a little bit. And uh, the one thing I want to point out here is that if you think of the family and how it's behaving in the project, Picture an imaginary box that's around all this information. And if that information is off center, top and bottom, just by a hair, it'll give you that issue of the uh, leader shoulder just kicking off into different random areas along the tag's uh, side. So to rectify this problem, what we're going to do is use a simple little trick uh, of drawing line work. So I'm going to simplify this process by clicking on the line tool on the create tab and go into the subcategory here of using invisible lines. So you can see I'm in the space tags category and I'm going to use the invisible lines subcategory here to, uh, to uh, give this example. So if I draw a line just above the word space here from end to end, and you'll notice that I'm aligning with the ends of my information here as I draw this line. I got one on one side. Now what I got to do is mirror this line here to the opposite side of my tag at the bottom here. So I'm going to use the mirror uh, pick axis tool here to pick the reference plane going from left to right and it'll put an invisible line down here. So now everything inside of the tag is contained between these two bounding elements. Again, I gotta make sure that I'm bounded left and right too, so I want to make sure that my text wraps occur within the bounded area because that again will kick that leader line off the endpoint of this underline here. So I gotta be careful with that. And that takes a little bit of testing to get right, but all in all, you should be able to do it. Again, to, to rectify that problem, you can simply draw vertical invisible lines here if necessary. Now, if we uh, load this back into the project, you'll see how it repairs itself immediately. So now you'll notice that the shoulder has glued itself to the end of that underline there for the word closet. And as we test this tag, we're going to move it around, of course, because we want to make sure that it works left to right. So I'm just going to move my uh, leader here just a little bit. I'm not trying to change the word closet, but if I tab down to this, hopefully it will let me do it. There we go. You'll see that I can move that over to that side and it works. As I switch types, it should not have any effect on the shoulder. So as I switch to space tag and I get rid of the uh, area down here, it goes right back to where it belongs. So that was a customized tag, but let's look at one out of the box and how easy it can be just out of the box. So here I got an air terminal tag, and again, it's not playing the way I expect it to play. Uh, I got this floating shoulder out here, kind of like detached from the information. And again, something that might drive you nuts, but don't worry, we can fix it. We'll go back in and edit this family. And again, some things might not be visible, so I'm going to do VG to turn on the visibility graphics and go to my annotation categories to turn on my reference planes and dimensions if necessary. And you'll see that this tag comes in uh, drastically off-center, and that's to uh, ensure that when you tag an air terminal without a leader, it kind of comes in off-center. Okay, so we can play along with that, but all I'm going to do here is I'm going to lengthen this line uh, like so, and then I'm going to go and drag it along with some of the labels that are in here up a little bit to the insertion point. Because again, I'm assuming that I might need leaders on this tag, so again, 
if I don't use leaders with my air terminal tags, then don't worry about doing this process. Leave it the way it is. But in this case, I am. So I'm going to go again, draw some invisible lines. So the create tab, line command, under the air terminals um, tag subcategory, we're going to pick invisible lines. And again, draw an imaginary line up here, the same length as the underline. And what we'll need to do is mirror that below. So if I mirror that, because again, you can notice the label's a little bit higher here on the, on the uh, underline than it is down here. So again, trying to keep that centered information so that the leader works the way we intended to. I'll load it right back in the project, overwrite the existing version, and voila. So now we have the tag where it works appropriately. And again, if I move it around, it should work on the opposite side as expected. And again, simple little fixes for major little problems that annoy us about Revit. All right, now let's go take a look at a sheet environment where we deal with a revision cloud. So I'm going to expand my sheets here, open it up, and I'll zoom in over here. And because I moved the tag, the uh, revision cloud's out of place. So I'll just go ahead and modify the sketch real quick by just moving it from here to here. No big deal. All right, and what, what we're doing here is looking at the delta. Uh, so the delta is not behaving as intended. You'll notice that on the sides here, it's kind of like hanging loose off the end. It's not even touching the triangle. But the uh, user wants it to end up on the point, just like it does if it goes to the top here. So how do we get it to do on the left and right points? Again, we'll resort to the family. So I'm going to edit that family. I'm going to zoom out a hair here and turn on the reference data inside the annotation categories. And I'll just slightly move this up here. So I'm just pressing and dragging. And using some of the geometry that's already inside the tag family, I'm going to mirror it and just change the subcategory that it belongs to. So the lines that I've mirrored from the delta are on the revision cloud tags category. I'm just going to change it over to invisible lines. And now if I load it into my project and override its parameters, um, I don't really need to, but in this case I'll just do it because I accidentally clicked on it. You'll notice that the shoulder is going to come up right off that endpoint as expected. So now you can see that we can make these tag families behave more efficiently uh, in the manner that we uh, would like them to behave just by simply adding a couple more elements to define the bounding area of that tag.